So welcome. I hope you can hear me okay. Sometimes I struggle with uh, microphones and volume and stuff, so if you can't hear me, just uh, shout out. Um, so welcome to this session on uh, Langpacks. Um, so a little bit of background. I mean, I think we've had quite good uh, internationalization support in Fedora for quite a long time now. Um, for a long time, Fedora, we install quite good front coverage and input methods by default, so it's a fairly friendly um, operating system for international users overall. And Red Hat has an uh, internationalization engineering team, so we've been kind of focusing on that for a long time also. And at the same time now, things are changing quite a lot. Um, the, the world of containers and modularity and different additions and different spins, different requirements. And uh, like in the past, we also had different localized spins of Fedora. Um, and I don't know, one example is some, some of our fonts, especially some of our um, East Asian fonts are um, quite large and so sometimes this is coming up like, um, I don't know, if it's something we can do to make our installation more flexible so that, I don't know, if someone wants a very small footprint then they can still do that. Um, um, so th this, this talk or presentation or session or discussion, I'm hoping it'll be a bit interactive and people will interject questions and also Actually, we don't have, I don't know, I don't have a lot of slides and we have a few small demos and stuff, but overall it's really to try and get uh, ideas and feedback and uh, discussion about the future direction. Um, so we'll, I don't know, the, the base of the talk is in three parts, very well, um, the slide is a bit about the past, present and future. Um, um, and we, actually made some progress on this over the last few years, um, like the change from YUM to DNF and um, the weak dependencies and so on. So already now we have various things in place that allow um, installation of lang packs and so on and even fonts now and also even input methods. Um, and I think we're going to maybe take this further. So. Uh, also, yeah, locales is maybe the most, Im well, for the wider Fedora, probably the locales sub-packaging, which we were also involved in, was also, it's maybe the biggest, um, well, in some sense, the most impact in terms of containers and so on. But um, but it also, yeah, affects many other things like uh, the toolbox um, and things like that. So. so maybe the first thing is, what is a line pack? Um, I mean, traditionally, I at least thought of Langpacks only as being like translation bundles, um, but and maybe that's still true in some sense, but uh, we, we've sort of taken this a bit, extended this now also to include things like locales and fonts, even input methods and so on, so at least we're all kind of handling these now within this sort of Langpacks um, framework. Um, and, uh, yep, so, so how, how did things evolve? Um, so first, a um, bit about the past. Um, so long, long ago in the comps, I hope most of you are familiar with uh, the Fedora comps, um, so basically it's sort of package groups. And for a long time we had different uh, support groups for, um, each language, so each or each language had its own. So, like there was a French support, German support, Hungarian support, Japanese support, and and then we'd list relevant packages, some of them conditional and so on, in those uh, well, in, in those groups. And it, it, it's an XML file, and uh, anyway, um, but and that was okay. Um, I think finally now we've got rid of all those uh, language groups um, because actually they weren't being, well, they, they could only be, 
After, well, they could only really be uh, installed manually by hand. I mean, uh, the installer and uh, yeah, other tools, we're not really using those anymore. So to avoid kind of duplication or confusion, we now got rid of those. Um, and then at a later stage, there was this special section in comps called Langpacks, which was basically for installation of translation, like things like uh, LibreOffice translations, man pages, um, dictionaries, and so on. So that was handled by some globbing and so on um, in that section. Um, and there was, yeah, young, young, Yum Langpax was a kind of a extension to Yum, which allowed to inject these uh, Langpax um, into uh, RPM transactions and so on. Um, but that didn't work with DNF, so um, yeah. Um, I don't know whether you want to talk at this point anything. Or, or So, uh, previously, uh, the lang packs were used by the comms. So, in comms, uh, let me show you. Suppose comms F29. Let's take an example of a Fedora 29 release comms file. So, comms file is having this section uh, lang packs. So, where uh, the definitions of this lang pack packages. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so this section basically defines uh, what Langpacks are in uh, the comms file. So, how this section is defined? Like, uh, there is one base package, and the base package name is written on the right side. So, like, uh, let's take an example of a LibreOffice. So, if you want to uh, install a LibreOffice Langpack. Uh, your system should be having this LibreOffice happen core package installed on your system. So that's a prior requirement. So likewise, these mappings are defined in this Langpack section in comms file. So if if your uh, if your system is already having the LibreOffice core package installed on your system, then whenever a, a new transaction will happen on your system through yum or uh, through yum. Uh, it will automatically check if the respective uh, LibreOffice Langpack package for the default locale that you are using is available in the repository or not. So if it finds that that package is available, then it will just pull that package into the uh, running transaction and it will install it. So this transaction can be you are just regularly updating your system, uh, yum update. Or you can uh, explicitly just updating a LibreOffice packages. So it will automatically find the respective Langpack package and pull it. So this was what happening when Yum was there. And this, uh, how, how Yum was using this Langpack concept. So this was the very first concept of this Langpacks in Fedora. Um, then uh, there was also group section was there. So groups. So in comms also, we have these groups are defined by language names. So you can even install directly this language by saying that yum group install Japanese support. So by that also, you used to get the related packages to your language. And here the definition was like type the conditional. So conditional means if this package xorg x11 serv server xorg was already installed then then and then only it's going to pull the ibus kkc on your system so likewise is the definition written in this comms file so you can directly even use to install the uh, language supports using the group group concept of yum so this was the after that uh, it was uh, uh, it was a need arise that we should have a uh, plugins that that can be uh, uh, that can automate this language installations. So a yum plugin written in Python language that used to pass this comms file, read the langpack section, and yeah. So and then. 
the same thing that what I have explained you uh, just before that it just reads if that uh, base package is already in the transaction then it pulls the respect to uh, Langpack package. So this was the second thing in this Langpack's develop, uh, evolution. Okay. Um, then uh, at the time of Fedora 21, uh, DNA became the default installer, package manager. Okay. So then what happens that uh, this uh, YUM Langpack plugin become um, uh, incompatible with the DNA. So we tried to migrate the YUM Langpack plugin to the DNF Langpack plugin. So we introduced a DNF Langpack's Python package to the users. And it worked the similar way the YUM Langpack used to work through the comps file section, okay. But then again we found that there is no way to auto install the packages, okay. So then uh, this concept was developed like we should have a meta packages, okay. So we directly uh, tell the DNF that uh, just install Langpacks hyphen jar package and then Langpacks hyphen jar whenever it comes into the DNF transaction, it will pull the necessary dependencies of that particular language. So this was the thing that got developed. I have this wiki page, uh, a small wiki page like C. So during the Fedora 13, we introduced the YUM Langpack plugin. Then in Fedora 22, we introduced a DNF plugin. Uh, then these are the some of the extra links that I, I'm keeping on this page. Then in Fedora 24, we introduced the installation with RPM with dependency. So uh, what was this uh, change that we utilize the RPM tags. So RPM by that time got these tags like a weak dependencies. So weak dependencies are uh, kind of a dependencies whereby if suppose some base package is already installed on your system, you can pull the respective language packages using that base package name, okay? So we are not using the comps here. We are totally going away from the comps file, okay? So this thing got introduced and we, uh, we added a new package called Langpacks package. And this Langpack package then started providing a different different sub packages per language like Langpacks, AS, Langpacks, JAR for different different packages. And then we set these different different Langpack packages to pull the respective language packages. Okay, this was the concept that we introduced in this change. And this change was introduced in Fedora 24. Uh, now what advantage we got that we got a particular meta package that should get pulled into the initial anaconda installation so we just uh, requested the anaconda team to add the code so that whenever a user uh, selects that i want to install in japanese uh, that langpacks hyphen ja meta package will automatically get selected into the initial transaction and then based on whatever the base packages are already included in that transaction, it tried to pull the respective language packages. Like suppose if the initial transaction of the Fedora 25 installation contains a man pages as a base package and you have selected to install in Japanese language, then it automatically picks the man pages hyphen jar package into the initial tra transaction. So this was the thing that was introduced there but I think there was some incompatibility keep coming with the anaconda that prevented to install these packages and then I think we totally uh, remove the ISO concept, DVD ISO concept from the workstation. Workstation introduced the live ISO concept. So that also created a problem for us because this, this meta packages only work if the package, the actual package present in your media or not. It was not there, so we again got stuck. I mean, what, what next to introduce for the lang packs? So we keep thinking on that and uh, we then thought that GNOME software is one of the way where we can uh, try to pull these packages automatically. So I think that's a, a different discussion that uh, Sandeep Anand will continue. Uh, 
let me continue with the uh, Langpax changes, how it got evolved. So this change we introduce in Fedora 24. Uh, yeah. So in Fedora 30, then uh, we decided that uh, we will totally remove the uh, language support concept from the comms file and let the users totally move to the using these meta packages. So this was just small change we introduced into the Fedora 30 and we just removed the uh, comms, uh, uh, comms entries for the individual languages and uh, just let the users directly use the langpack siphon that particular lang code packages. In this current Fedora 31 release, we added another change to the langpacks whereby we split the Langpacks meta packages into the two packages. Like if there is a Langpacks hyphen ja package, it got split into the Langpacks hyphen core hyphen ja and Langpacks hyphen ja. Now, what will happen if you just install a Langpacks hyphen core hyphen ja? It will ensure that your system will receive at least one default font and one IME input method. So that we have ensured while splitting this Langpacks meta packages. Uh, Input method, uh, like uh, IBUS KKC for Japanese. So uh, I can demo something like, so suppose. So See, so when you try to install Langpack Sapanja, it is trying to install the base, installing the requested package Langpack Sapanja, and then the dependencies, these are the weak dependencies uh, that are given at the end. So we have introduced this Google Noto Serif CJK TTC fonts as a default font, and then this, as I told you, LibreOffice Core is already installed on my system, so it tried to pull the help jar, langpack jar, and man pages was also there installed, so it pulled a man pack jar. So this is how, I mean, when you try to install a single package, it will pull the dependencies related to that language on your system. So why is it not installed in I think it's already on my system. Actually, I noticed this problem in toolbox, so I need to check on the actual desktop system. Um, so yeah, yeah, I don't have. have I got some right, right. For IBUS KKC, IBUS is a base package. Let me check. Oops. No, it's not there. So, I mean, if I was having an IBUS, it would have pulled IBUS KKC as well. So, see, like core. So I'm trying for ODA language, Langpacks hyphen core hyphen or. So uh, it is trying to install the font package only and not the IME because again the IBUS is not there. Otherwise, it would have pulled the IBUS hyphen M17 in package. Because being this an Indic language, we have the uh, M17 in key maps as an IME. So if IBUS was there, IBUS M17 would have get installed in this transaction only. But it is only installing the default font. And if I switch this command to install the complete Langpacks package for the ODA language, then these are the number of packages that get pulled into the transaction. Is it okay that the is there, no? Yeah, yeah, that's something we are dealing with the GLFC people. Currently, we have the bug open. Yeah. 
Yes, yes. And that's why we requested. I mean, we need to discuss with the JLPC team yeah. and request them that let us allow to install it as a default JLPC locale. So that's something is going on still in discussion. So, yeah, I think, yeah, that is what I'm done with this thing. So, uh, this F31 change is the one that we introduced that split the packages. So, we called it as a Langpack score for itn functionality. So, core packages will ensure one font and one IME for your language, at least. Okay, so that was the present, um, so the DNF. Just recapping what Pag showed, the DNF rich and weak dependencies that we're using for uh, Langpack installation and this new yeah, meta packages that we have. Um, so I, I talked a little bit about, um, I mentioned glibc earlier and um, so for locales, um, actually Mike, Mike is actually <laughs> more well, Mike is actually working upstream with glibc uh, on locales and things, so probably he should say some words too. But just I was just more about the packaging side on the glibc side. So, um, um, so firstly, there's two. Well, again, do, I don't know. Do you want to talk a bit about, about the locales? Yeah, maybe it's better. We can better come here. Fedora glibc spec file a while ago, we made some changes that uh, sub-packages are created for the different languages. Originally, there was only one uh, glibc common file which contained uh, user lib uh, local archive, and that was a huge file, something like 105 megabytes, which had the locales for all languages. And you couldn't strip it down. I want only French, and I don't care for the rest. And so we. Uh, did some changes to the spec file that the spec file has uh, auto-generated parts with Lua scripts which generate sub-packages for each language. And now you can still install a glibc all length pack to get the big blob for everything, but you can also install individual packages for uh, individual languages if you want to save space. If you install all individual packages, you have more uh, data overall on your hard disk because the archive is more efficient. But if you only need a few, then it's better to install the individual package. So now you have a choice. And the choice has become more important because the archive has about doubled in size. It's now about 210 megabytes because I, one year ago I updated the sorting algorithms, uh, algorithm to a newer version of Unicode. And uh, because lots of characters have been added to Unicode, that and uh, unfortunately, the default Unicode collation order is duplicated in every locale. This cannot be shared, not even if you use the archive. That's a glibc limitation at the moment. So uh, that made it even more important to be able to install individual locales. And now, as Parag has said, uh, this uh, something like glibc langpack fr needs to be pulled in when you install this meta package for Langpacks. And because of the split into the uh, Langpacks and Langpacks core, uh, something needs to be done with the dependencies in the glibc spec file. So I think I uh, need to do that soon after this conference. No? It should be pretty easy. I think that's about it. No? Um, yeah. So, and there's one more package. <laughs> there's this dummy package they have, uh, which is like a minimal package, um, which actually, I don't, I don't think there's anyone from GDBC team here, but I, I don't know. I kind of proposed in a, this related Bugzilla ticket whether that package cannot be dropped, because I, I don't really see that it serves much purpose, but anyway. Um, maybe I could just do a very small demo. So this is actually Fedora Silver Blue, um, and um, okay, can ignore that. And okay, oh, this is, oh, okay. 
Thanks for my toolbox. Okay, so, um, I'll try this again. So this is, yeah, this is, I'm currently using ENGB. Um, in Silverblue, we have the the big all uh, also workstation. We have the um, um, this all Langpacks archive. So it basically contains all the uh, all the GLBC locales by default. Obviously, if you want, you can replace it. Um, um, yeah, there's lots of locales. Um, six, oh, okay, 860. Um, and now in the Fedora base container, we've dropped, oh, we, yeah, recently the um, EN US was dropped. I mean, the English locales are no longer installed by default. So only C.UTF8. So that's, that's, I think that's good. I think that reduced the size uh, by maybe five, six megabytes or something. Or something like that. Um, I'm good at typing. Um, I think this works. So, uh, Um, and this is also reflected now in uh, Fedora Toolbox too. So the latest um, um, yeah. Fedora 30, Fedora 31 Toolbox containers also only have uh, C.UTF8. So it's, so it's a small, well, a small change. So I don't know. It may affect some users. So, but obviously you can easily install um, yeah locales if you if you wish. But, um, Right, so so I heard, <laughs> I heard Carlos talking about that too. But anyway, I think it's not so serious. Okay, yeah, yeah. I think this image only went stable two days ago, maybe or something. So anyway, it's there now. So, um, so yeah. Then occasionally you may get some. Local warnings raises this when you're running some application or something that's expected to run in a different locale or something. But um, anyway, I think it's pretty easy to solve and it makes a very small basic uh, image. So, okay, I shall go back to the slides if I can. Okay. Any any questions or comments on this point? Um, so Cindy is going to talk a little bit about GNOME, off, uh, GNOME software. Um, yeah. Uh, um, so this is this is Fedora 30. Um, so just before. So currently, if you want to have Lang packs installed in GNOME software. Um, I don't know. Are you going to talk about this or not? Oh, okay. The status quo. No, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then just I just wanted to show you quickly how things look right now. Um, so, you, so if you install, search for something like language or I don't know, or Hungarian or something. I don't know. Um, yeah. Then this this thing appears. Oh, okay, and then so so it is possible to install these meta packages that Parag was talking about in Chrome software. Um, I'm not going to do this now in Silverblue because I'd have to reboot to get it to appear. But um, anyway, so that's that's there. Um, yeah, that's kind of anyway. Um, okay. Actually, this is not that good. Oh, I thought I was getting different results earlier. Um, okay. All right. Yeah. Thirty-eight more matches. All right. Anyway. Um. So. Ah. 
Okay, maybe I'll come back to flat packs later um, if we have time. Um, ah, okay. I think I already talked about yeah this, so I can probably skip this. Um, so yeah, maybe you want to. Actually, we are working with GNOME software so that we can have auto installation of Langpack meta packages. So I can show a small demo. So currently, we are in simplified Chinese, and uh, and we have three language packs installed: Brazilian, Portuguese, English, and simplified Chinese. Now let's switch our language to some other local. See, uh, we are selecting Japanese. Here we need to log off and log in again uh, to get into Japanese. Right, so uh, this is small screen for renaming some of the folders. Actually, I'll be using my development environment to showcase this. So, so uh, the code is coupled with uh, auto updates from GNOME software. So it will take a minute to start the auto update thing. And then we can see how language packs are getting installed. Uh, Actually, right. Actually, no notification or no permission. I mean, no dialog box is there. If you are selecting your language in Anaconda itself and logging in, so the first time GNOME software will check for updates, it will install the language pack behind the scenes. Automatically, right, exactly. And this will happen for language switch as well. So both ways. Uh, currently, no. Okay. <laughs> so uh, this here we can see that language for Japanese has been installed. And uh, we can just run it again to show in the genome software. So here we have meta package installed, and uh, in the logs itself, if you'll see, then uh, it will, it will. Uh, I mean, it does a lot of operations. It 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 in the background it searches for the language pack, and then for that particular locale, it installs the meta package. So that's it. <laughs> Right. So just one thing, like uh, if if a user uninstalls the meta package by itself, then this feature will not uh, reinstall it. I mean, the user will manually install the language. Yeah, that may make sense. I mean, so then I, did, I think we, I missed, or we missed, I don't know. We, uh, well, you, I think Sundeep just mentioned, but I mean, the idea of this feature is to kind of parallel how Anaconda does network installs currently. So currently, if you, if you do a network install, say, of Workstation or Fedora Server, then you will get the LAN packs installed automatically. So the kind of UX experience we wanted was that, so you, you do a live install of, say, um, I don't know, um, the Workstation, then it will then post-install that LAN pack, which would have been installed by the network installer automatically, and it will do it after. But I agree, it, it, would, it wouldn't hurt to have a little pop-up or something. And uh, originally I had kind of envisaged that it would be, it would be a semi-manual process in the sense that it would be included in a GNOME software transaction. Like when you first boot up, say, after a fresh install, then usually there are updates. And then GNOME software will say, oh, you have, there are 10 updates available or something. And then, it, and then one of those would be the LAN packs. But, Anyway, the way it's been done now is that it's uh, done in, in an automatic fashion. We may evolve this more in the future. Um, yeah. Um, um, yeah. And 
on anyway on something like well um, at the moment we yeah, something like for Fedora Silver Blue it would have to be a reboot anyway. So that, that, that's still well, this is sort of one of the things I kind of wanted to cover in this exploratory part of the talk, but um yeah, how how we want to improve this at least going forward and um so I, yeah, there are only a few more slides actually, and um, there's not much time, so um, I can talk a bit more. But if people have questions, we, I'd love to hear any yeah. feedback or thoughts some people have. Or, um, yeah. so, um, the question is, if we have had Yum Loop, and now we move to Langpipe, so if this change is lossless from the package installation perspective, so that there were 10 packages for this schedule, Para can comment. Um, lossless. Um, well, it's not like a lossless because we are using the recommends are being tagged, which will just recommend you those packages. So it's not a loss in packages. So complete group has been converted to use the IDN packages. So same your example by yes, because so whatever was written that Japanese support group should install these many packages, you should get similar output. I think the biggest change is that previously you do something like uh, do a group install of the, I don't know, say French support. And now instead you just install the Langpacks FR. I mean, that conceptually that's the biggest change. Um, yeah. Any other questions? I could just say a few more words then. Um, so for fonts, currently we're installing, so it's a bit like the locale situation. That currently we install lots of locales, lots of, well, quite a good amount of fonts, and also input methods by default. So, so one question is how, I don't know. The, the, another option would be to install less stuff and then install, post-install more things uh, later. Um, and there's a bit of risk, I don't know, in the sense that I mean, it does make it a bit more difficult for international users, but it also makes maybe the yeah the image smaller to download and so on. So there are kind of pros and cons to this, and I think something we need to evaluate going forward. Like, do we want to only install a few locales? Do we only want to install? Do we want to install less fonts? And in fact, we've made some progress on the font side. Um, for Fedora 31, in a sense that it's now easy to get fonts um, installed um, afterwards if you're adding, or if you're in Toolbox, for example. Currently, Toolbox doesn't use um, just the host fonts, so you have to install fonts into the Toolbox if you want them. And also, one thing that we may want to do is to mount the system fonts into the toolbox, that which would solve that problem in some sense. But, however, another way might be to yeah, leverage the, uh, the lang packs for that. Um, and I think for input methods, it's less of an issue in some sense. Um, I mean, post installing input methods maybe is not quite as big a deal. I mean. Um, but I mean, not having fonts and locales is kind of a showstopper for I mean, for basic um, kind of bootstrapping and so on. So, um, 
Ja. Um, actually, the, the most controversial thing is about um, translations, and this is really a very big and difficult shape. Naively, it sounds quite simple, but um, actually, I know, we thought a little bit about it in the past, but the, I mean, the idea is that currently most Fedora packages just bundle all their translations in it, and uh, so currently there are ugly hacks where you maybe just um, exclude or tell RPM don't install translations, for example, and in fact, I think this affects, um, yeah, or, well, uh, some, so many things can also be done for documentation, but, um, but it gets quite messy, and then if you want to enable translations, then you either probably need to reinstall the package and so on, so it's not very nice. So, in the ideal world, it would be nice if you could only install the translations you actually need, rather than 50 different translations. You probably only need one or two of those at maximum, so, um, yeah, whether it should be done in some kind of enhancements to RPM or whether it should be done at the sort of build system level where we kind of do some automatic sub-packaging or, or other way of getting translations um, installed. So, um, but I think that's a long, it's going to be a long, long, well, I don't know. I don't, I don't think we're going to do that any time immediately, but maybe something we think about. Um. All right, thank you very much. Thanks, everyone, for coming. <laughs>